Olá pessoal, boa tarde. Estamos aqui novamente e agora com o episódio número 16 da websérie Mundo Empreendedor Expedição Israel. Estaremos aqui toda quinta, uma e meia, sempre com um convidado de peso, falando sobre os assuntos mais relevantes no ambiente de inovação e empreendedorismo aqui em Israel, um dos maiores polos tecnológicos do mundo. Eu sou Daniel Scaba, CEO da Ibitec, que tem aproximado esse rico ecossistema de inovação do público brasileiro. Já estou por aqui há quase 30 anos, vivenciando inovação e tecnologia em todas as suas cores, na faculdade, no exército, em multinacionais e como empreendedor. Agora, aqui com vocês, mergulhando nesse mundo de inovação e empreendedorismo. E antes de chamar o nosso convidado especial de hoje, gostaria de chamar a Bárbara para passar uns recados. Olá, Bárbara, tudo bem? Olá, Daniel. Olá, pessoal. Como sempre, eu vim aqui trazer alguns recadinhos extras para vocês. E aí, né? claro que eu não posso deixar de falar também para vocês entrarem agora no nosso manual de bordo. Quem acompanha aqui com a gente já sabe, mas para quem ainda não sabe... A gente coloca lá vários materiais complementares de cada um dos episódios que a gente já teve. Foram inúmeros aqui, várias experiências relacionadas a esse mundo né, da Startup Nation. Então, vários outros episódios para vocês se aprofundarem ainda mais. Além também de que vocês podem assistir todos eles na íntegra, né? basta se inscrever aí no nosso manual de bordo. E, é claro, também os insights que a gente vai fazendo aqui on time. Então, à medida que a gente está transmitindo aqui, a gente vai montando os principais insights para vocês acompanharem. E, claro, né, o material de hoje, a gente trouxe dois artigos falando sobre o mundo das startups. O primeiro deles é sobre como ideias inovadoras podem se transformar em um grande negócio. E o segundo é sobre smart money, que é para você poder potencializar né, o sucesso das startups. Então, se vocês querem saber um pouquinho mais sobre esses assuntos, acessem agora o nosso manual de bordo. Além disso, convidar vocês também a participarem do nosso Insight Premiado. Basta vocês participarem aqui, compartilhando no Story do Instagram um print da nossa tela, escrito qual é o Insight de hoje, né? Qual foi o Insight que fez você querer compartilhar essa ideia com os seus amigos? E aí, pronto, você já vai estar participando assim que postar no seu Stories, marcando o arroba Grupo Voito. Depois disso, você já vai estar concorrendo a um kit Voito ou então a um livro de Excel da nossa editora. Então, oportunidade não falta, a gente tem de sobra, mas vamos lá então, que eu já estou aqui com a caneta na mão para anotar todos os insights. Que maravilha, obrigadíssimo, Bárbara. And now, I would like to invite Johnny Newfield for a chat about how to boost innovation by investing in startups. Hey, Johnny! Hey, guys, how are you doing? Thanks for accepting our invitation, Johnny. It's a pleasure. Look forward to speaking yeah. to you guys, and thank you very much for inviting us and, and to the hosts. Yeah, thank you. Johnny has a, MBA, a BA in Business and Economics by University of Cape Town in South Africa and an MBA by Bairilan University in Israel. Johnny held several positions in financing and investments in South Africa, India, USA, and Israel. And today, Johnny is a director of strategic partnerships in our crowd. So, Johnny, tell us, what is our crowd and how it differs from traditional venture capital funds? Well, I think first, let's just define what uh, you know, venture capital is, and then we can go into the differences between uh, our crowd and, and what's typically you find in the market. So, you know, venture capital is really about providing the startup capital required for businesses to grow. Um, typically, it's, it's, it's uh, associated with technology startups, um, although that can be, you know, quite a wide range from you know, medical technologies to financial technologies, etc. And it's really about providing the entrepreneurs with the capital um, that will facilitate their growth prior to them, you know, starting off prior to them having even revenues in their businesses. So really allowing them to, uh, you know, get the capital that they need to build their business models, acquire, you know, a team and then start kind of working on the initial stages of the project and then going through the, that with the entrepreneur through the various stages of growth, um, you know, until they can do an exit or become profitable or IPO, etc. So that's venture capital. I think what is uh, typically found in the market is that there were two main players in the space. One were venture capital funds and others were certain kind of tech companies that had their own in-house 
uh, venture capital units. Um, so they're called CVCs, corporate venture capital units. And that's pretty much what was um, most common in the market. So in all, if you wanted to play in the space, you really had to go to a venture capital fund in order to kind of invest in the top tier startups. And um, I think where our crowd is different is it's really opened up the world to, to be able to access these types of investments. Now, I, I want to just, you know, emphasize that, you know, there's venture capital and there's venture capital. There's venture capital where, you know, any guy who's got an idea is trying to raise capital. And, you know, some of those are going to be great successes, but the large majority of them are not going to be. And, you know, you'll find from time to time, uh, you know, business, uh, you know, people approaching um, high net worth individuals or families or friends to try to raise capital for their businesses. And that's fine. And, you know, it's a high risk, uh, high return type uh, approach. But there's the other venture capital where we like to play is really looking at more the top tier venture capital opportunities where the venture capital firms are playing. You know, those are the players that are in the ecosystems, understand the investments, are looking at hundreds of deals before they select one or two to do, um, which is something that the average in, in investor, even a high net worth individual who's, you know, very well uh, accustomed to investing in liquid assets and other, other types of opportunities, doesn't necessarily have access to that level of ecosystem and number of deals and expertise in the particular technology. So our crowd fits in because we we kind of do all that legwork for the investor. We uh, are a venture capital firm. Like any other, we have an investment team. We source deals. We're looking at over 250 deals per month, of which we kind of deep dive into 20 or 30, and then probably select to invest in two or three. Um, in, any, in any deal that we invest, we put our own capital in. That's just like any other venture capital firm. But I think the nuance of our crowd is that alongside us, we allow other investors to come in and invest on the same terms as we do. So that means that the average investor can come in alongside us through our vehicle into these top tier opportunities, um, global opportunities for disruptive technologies. And they, the investors are coming in at the same terms as all the other VCs into the same deals. And that I think is a very, very unique offering um, and something that prior to our crowd didn't really exist in the market. So what you actually are bringing some, uh, uh, what was common like uh, investing in uh, listed companies that you could buy some uh, stocks of these companies. So mm -hmm. now you're bringing these concepts to uh, non-listed companies, to startups that actually could put some of your money in different companies. This is the way it works. Um, exactly. And I think this has become more and more the trend. And it's not only us that's realized this. I think if you look at all the kind of family offices, the you know other institutional investors, everyone's starting to kind of look at this private capital market a lot more seriously. And, you know, the reason for it is twofold. One is obviously we know that technology is, uh, is driving a lot of value in the market at the moment. I mean, if you look at all the if you look at two, the year 2000, and uh, what the top kind of market cap companies were in the listed space, and you look at 2020, you'll see that there's been a great, uh, there's been a change between kind of the the old oil companies and oil barons and other you know bricks and mortar type businesses to technology companies, you know the Apples, the Teslas, the Googles, etc. So everyone understands that technology has been a huge value driver over the last two decades. So you know you you need to play in that in that space. Uh, but the second aspect is that. With the with the kind of you know boost in the in the number of kind of venture capital firms and the cap and private equity firms and the capital that they have under under management, it means that these companies are able to stay private longer, and that means that the kind of upside or the value the value capture is happening while these mark, while these companies are still private. So if you end up waiting till the company IPOs, you kind of missed a long a lot a long portion of the value accrual to the shareholders. And so I think more and more investors are realizing that they need, if they want to play in technology, in addition, in addition to having their kind of exposure on the listed, uh, listed markets, they also need to have a certain allocation into, the, into those companies while they're still private. And I think that's really uh, you know, an important investment theme that's coming out in the market at the moment. So I mentioned that our crowd in a certain way is uh, democratizing the investment in startups and giving the opportunity to every single investor. So the focus of our crowd, your investors are mainly private investors or you also have corporates, family offices and so on? So, yeah, so we've got a wide range of different types of investors. And I think just to start off, 
Our crowd itself can only really work with accredited investors. Now, that's a kind of a definition that varies between jurisdiction to jurisdiction. But in essence, it, it, it means that you're an experienced investor and you have a certain amount of kind of net asset value, certain amount of capital to deploy. Because as I mentioned before, uh, venture capital is a, a higher risk, kind of perceived to be a higher risk asset class. And therefore, um, you know, we're not targeting kind of the general retail investor. So it's got to be an accredited investor, but that, that leads to a very wide kind of range of types of investors. We have high net worth individuals, um, you know, professionals could be lawyers, doctors or businessmen. Uh, we have ultra high net worth individuals who might have set up a single family office to manage their affairs. We deal with multifamily, office, multifamily offices that manage the wealth of, you know, a, a number of families under their banner and, you know, look to us to kind of access that venture capital space. We work with institutional institutional investors so with banks and other financial institutions again to provide um you know this type of asset class to their clients and then in addition to that we, we work with large multinational corporations that don't necessarily have the expertise uh, um, or time to kind of focus in on the new emerging technologies but they'd like to understand what's going on they'd like to make investments uh, from a strategic point of view so that they kind of aware of what's coming into the market and then you know, going on the ride with us. So it's a wide range of accredited investors from the private individual to the large multinational corporation. And I think that what is unique is that, you know, through our crowd, they're all coming in at the same terms into the same deal. So I think it's quite a unique proposition. And, uh, and for me, as a startup, uh, what is the advantage or disadvantage to being invested by our crowd com compared to a uh, traditional venture capital fund or a, a corporate venture capital fund? Well, I think, you know, I think what, what you know, what the various financial crises have, have uh, pointed out to us is that you do not want to have what, there are two risks you don't want. You don't want concentration risk and you don't want correlation risk. Meaning if all your shareholders are identical and you face a, you know, you face a certain problem in your business or a challenge, um, if you've got the same exact type of investor, then they're all going to react in a very similar fashion. Um, so too with concentration risk. If you've got one big investor who kind of, you know, controls 90% of your, your company, then you, you're going to be dictated to by that, by that player. And so I think it's very important for, for an entrepreneur to have, you know, various investors in their business. So, you know, from their own, their own shares that, or their own capital that they may have poured into their business, um, along with a few angels that maybe help them start off. And then a number of venture capital firms or uh, corporates, strategic investors in their business. I think what our crowd is, you know, as I mentioned, our crowd is kind of a venture capital fund that's got the platform built on top of it, which that which means that it it, it kind of behaves in a, a slightly different manner to the typical venture capital firm. Um, first of all, we create a lot of transparency between our investor and the company. So if we've got, say, you know, a number, I'll give you an example of kind of Let's say we've got a medical technology company and a number of our investors happen to be doctors or professors of medicine in the United States. Obviously, what can happen is just by those investors being having a cl closer understanding of what's actually going on in that company, they can assist that company because if they invest in that company, it means they believe in that company. And if they believe in that company, it means that they'll want it to succeed and therefore utilize their networks. And so there's a huge amount of embedded value in the network that our crowd can facilitate and create. We've got over 100,000 accredited investors on our platform and we work with hundreds of multinational corporations. So the entire network has got, a, got this embedded value built in it. And I think that's a big advantage to the startup, uh, to the founders or the, the owners of the startup, because it means that our crowd, you know, behaves, sli the, 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 it behaves slightly differently and, and extra value can be extracted out of that relationship. So... I think really that that embedded value is one of the key causes of our success. And, you know, we've grown in a quite a competitive market here in Israel. We're now a global firm, but we were born in, in Israel in a very competitive space. And we now the most, uh, you know, the most active VC in Israel at the moment. So I think one of the reasons is because of this increased transparency and kind of direct links that we can create between our various partners around the world, our investors, our companies and the multinationals that we, we work with that can kind of help the businesses grow and uh, and also in follow on rounds, et cetera, behave in a slightly different manner than, you know, the typical VC might behave. And, you know, it's always good, as I say, to have different types of investors in your business. You mentioned the incredible number of 100,000 investors. Where yes. are the investors are coming from? So we've, we've got a totally global platform. I think, uh, you know, 
we've got over 180 countries represented in terms of our wow. investors. So from literally all over the four corners of the world, of the globe, you know, we have people coming onto our platform and investing alongside us. Um, in terms of the deals that we do, um, I'd say the majority of them are, are Israel, uh, say 50% Israel, then I'd say 50% the rest of the world, with a, a large majority of that being in the United States. But, you know, we're looking at deals all over, and I think that's not a fixed ratio. That's growing and moving, and will, that percentage will evolve over time. Um, but from our investor base, it's a totally global, you know, a totally global play. And anyone from anywhere in the world can really come in and, and have a look at our platform and, and for no charge, see what's going on, understand what's you know happening in the space, and then you know execute on the companies that they feel kind of speak to them. So Johnny, can you please share with our audience uh, some of mind-blowing companies that you have invested? Yeah, so I think I'll bring up two um, two interesting ones, and you know, just in the interest of time, because I'm not sure how much time we have. One is in the um, in the in the cyber security space, and it's really you know a, a company that's you know, now in many of the major um, banks in the world. In fact, uh, American Express Ventures is a is an invest in this company, and it's a company called Biocatch. And what they have used is it's called behavioral biometrics. And um, if you can imagine, you know that uh, these days one of the the biggest risks that you have as a as a person on the internet is you do your online banking, you, you know, your, your whole life is really on your, on your computer and you can get hacked, all these phishing attacks, et cetera. So Biocatch realized that beyond just the password, there are other ways of identifying, you know, who this individual is that's on the other side of the, uh, of the internet. So what they developed is this, this behavioral biometric system that measures different kind of vectors and factors of the, how you use your technology. So, for example, in your cell phone, it could be how you hold your phone. Is it in your right hand? Is it in your left hand? Do you hold it up or down? When you, know, when you type on it, what's the speed that you type, et cetera, et cetera. And the same on your computer. So that when you type, when, when a hacker, let's say, gets your password and starts trying to access your bank account, um, this system will flag to the bank that there's an anomaly going on here. This, you know, the password is Johnny Newfield. But the way he's typed, it doesn't seem that it's Johnny Newfield. And this will create kind of an alert system internally in the bank. And obviously, it will prevent, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of uh, uh, false kind of entries into various bank accounts. And, you know, having myself been a victim of one of these uh, phishing attacks, wow. you know, it's, a, it's a good to know that the banks are kind of putting these systems in place so that, you know, this type of stuff doesn't happen. Because it's, it's, it's really becoming one of the biggest problems in the world. And, uh, you know, it's a multi, multi-billion dollar market that they're tackling. And it's just amazing to think that, you know, how, how a, 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 com a company can really identify you just by the way you kind of utilize your, te your, your, your uh, internet technology. So it's an incredible company. Wow. Um, the company I wanted to highlight um, is a company that's called Insight Tech, which is a, it's a medical technology company. And this company... Um, uses ultrasound in order to kind of um, address various conditions. The first condition that they they worked on was Parkinson's, and um, by using this, it's like a system. It, it, it looks like you're going into like an MRI, um, and with a totally non-invasive, meaning there's no incisions or anything into the brain. They direct this ultrasound um, into various parts of your brain, and this kind of reduces the the uh, effect of the Parkinson's on the individual such that, you know, when they come out of this treatment, they can, you know, these individuals can hold their hands straight again. And it's actually unbelievable to see. I'm not sure if you were at the, um, at our last summit prior to, the, you know, the COVID taking over the world, we actually had a presentation where one of the patients kind of spoke about how this thing has really changed his life. And uh, this, uh, this company is already a unicorn. It's, uh, you know, grown just from this old timers, uh, you know, use case, but there are other use cases that are they looking at. And I think you can expect, you know, many more of these kind of, it's almost miraculous type of medical technologies coming out where things that you saw in Star Trek are now actually, you know, in real life. Yeah, I, I did have the, the opportunity to see this patient and I'm still in tears until today, uh, just seeing the amazing things that they happened to her. It was absolutely amazing. Thanks for yeah. reminding me this moment because they're uh, very, very special. Yeah, that's absolutely incredible when you see And But I mean, there are hundreds of companies. Each company that you see is really tackling kind of a global problem. And, uh, 
And as I said, I mean, technology is really paving the way to the future. And I think since COVID, many of the sectors have actually got this huge tailwind because it just demonstrated to the entire world that technology is the way to kind of overcome these types of hiccups. And, and you saw how the technology stocks recovered and, you know, the use cases for things like telemedicine and, you know, other re remote learning, remote work, all these kinds of ideas that were, you know, promoted for many, many years. COVID just proved that, you know, this is really the way forward and accelerated many of the sectors, um, you know, probably a number of years, if not decades, you know, fast forward as them. So you see a lot of a lot of movement in the market at the moment. Thanks a lot, Johnny. And Johnny, we got some questions from our audience prior to mm -hmm. this interview. And uh, one of them is, uh, what are the risks involving the investment in startups for, for me as a private investor? Okay, so I mean, there, there are a number of risks. First of all, if you're going into a, a company that's kind of not yet profitable, which is usually the case um, in, these startup, in these startups, it means that, you know, you're backing a business where they, they're living off the capital they raise in order to kind of run their business operation. So, you know, should they not succeed to kind of either get revenues or land a next round, your capital's at risk. You know, you could lose all your money. So then that's a very important risk that you need to be familiar with. And therefore, you know, this isn't the kind of investment that you put all your money in. This is a, a you know, an allocation that you have. Um, you know, you looked at your kind of investable assets and you decide what is a prudent amount to kind of look at the venture space. And then, you know, then you can start deploying into the, into the you know, appropriately for you. Um, again, I think it's very important to not, you know, bet on one horse. So uh, an investor going into, um, into the space should kind of pick a, a few, you know, either a fund where your, your, your uh, investments are diversified. And on our cloud, we, we offer a number of funds um, as well as the kind of individual deals. Or you select a portfolio of deals and build up over time um you know a, a holding uh, that kind of meets your requirements so you know my view would be it's probably better to have 10 deals of 10,000 than it is to have one deal of 100 if you're playing in this space um and in our crowd you know we we do offer you know entry points that are a lot lower than the venture capital funds in general which usually it's hundreds of thousands of dollars if not millions to kind of get into these venture capital funds with us the entry ticket is a lot lower so it makes it more accessible for individuals to kind of build that type of portfolio um, you know the other the other risks the other risks are obviously the the fact that you know you don't know what's around the corner and there, there are a number of you know you're playing in a startup space and there are going to be competitors from all over the world that are, are you know looking at what's going on and, and you as an individual don't necessarily um, know what's in the market so you might get you know shown a deal uh, that's very very appealing to you but you don't know that there are another hundred companies doing exactly the same thing at a similar stage. And that's why I'm saying, you know, if you're coming through an, a, 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 a platform like our crowd where we've got a team that's kind of looking at these deals, where we are looking at 200 deals. And when we pick the deal that we're going in, we probably looked at 50 or 100 other such companies in the same sector. You know, you're not going to, you know, we're going to make that mistake less, uh, you know, less often than someone who's kind of just doing it after seeing one or two deals in a particular sector. So it's very important to like understand the sector and understand the uh, technology. And if you don't, you need to kind of leverage of someone else's expertise. I think that's very important. And another question that you got was, uh, what? how should I start? And how should I pick an investment that's suited to my profile, to, to my type of person? Okay, so I mean, that's, that, that really depends on who the person is, right? But I think um, one of the benefits of like a platform such as our crowd is that you can come on with no, uh, no, with no upfront fee. We only charge a fee on deploying once you've deployed your capital, which means that you can come on, um, you know, open an account, look at deals as they are appearing on our platform. Uh, most deals you don't, you know, you can just look at, um, you can go into our due diligence reports, you can watch webinars, and, um, and you can really kind of build up a, se a sense, uh, you know, before you even pull the trigger on any particular deal of what's going on in the market. Once you're, once you're ready to invest, and then I think it's also good to kind of participate in the, the webinars with the companies, to participate in the various events that our crowd puts on or other type of kind of venture capital events that you might have access to, to again, get more familiar with the ecosystem and the players. And then, then it's really about looking at kind of, uh, you know, what is your allocation of uh, capital that you'd like to make, you know, divide it amongst a certain number of investments that you'd like to make, and then 
I prudently, you know, look at companies that speak to you. It's, it possibly might be in a, in a sector that you have a, spe a specific affinity to. You might have know a bit about ag tech or have a business, you know, a family business that's involved in, uh, you know, in logistics or something like that. So then you can kind of start the entry point in a in a sector that's closer to home. Um, but but even so, I think it's it's really about just like kind of digesting this the digesting the ecosystem a bit and then starting to play with smaller tickets and then kind of building up over time and i think our crowd allows you to do to do that in, in a very transparent way and uh, that's the way i think i would start you know no oh, that's great that's great uh, great knowledge great sharing mm -hmm. great tips so mm -hmm. johnny i'd like to thank you so much for being with us today sharing your experience your knowledge t telling us about user ecosystem, startups ecosystem, our crowd. Thank you so much. It's a great pleasure. And thank you guys for hosting me. And we look forward to seeing you guys on the platform and at our various events. Yeah, no doubt. And meeting you everywhere. We need a coffee next week, Johnny. Okay, good, good. In person, let's hope. <laughs> In person, no doubt. <laughs> See you, Johnny. Thanks a lot. E agora, pessoal, queria chamar de novo a Bárbara para contar um pouquinho para a gente como é que foi essa conversa com o Johnny. Olha, essa conversa foi incrível. Estava aqui preenchendo meu caderninho agora mesmo com esse último insight. E algumas coisas assim que eu consegui observar né, do discurso dele. Em primeiro lugar, que realmente ter essa plataforma, né, por exemplo, como a que eles disponibilizam, é uma grande vantagem para todo mundo né, que está participando. Em primeiro lugar, pelo ecossistema que eles conseguem construir. Então, ele comentou, por exemplo, de ter é, investidores nos quatro cantos do mundo, pessoas de tudo quanto é lugar ali do mundo que a gente consegue acessar. Então, essa parte do networking já é algo que a gente consegue identificar e é muito difícil de se encontrar no mercado. Então, a gente ter acesso a isso já é algo muito bacana. E, além disso, também né, a gente conseguir identificar qual é o tipo, às vezes, de investimento que a gente quer fazer, se é um investimento mais de risco ou se é um investimento um pouco mais tradicional, digamos assim. Né? Então, ele comentou aqui com a gente sobre os vários tipos de investimento que podem ser realizados e essa tomada de decisões também fica muito mais simplificada, muito simplificada. a partir dessa Até plataforma, demais. por exemplo. Exato. Né? Só entra ali... Simples, é investe ou não? É um botãozinho. Vai... Calma aí. É igual a iFood, né? A gente só vê a comida ali e comprar. É, exatamente. É, 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 olha, ótimo exemplo, que realmente trouxe as, essas coisas que, teoricamente, bem complexas, investimento, startup, entender due diligence, até o quê? Pum, num botãozinho, mas tudo mastigadinho, bem construído. Exato. E esses exemplos que ele trouxe, que loucura. Nossa, eu até anotei aqui, né, que ele falou, por exemplo, daquela startup lá em cibersegurança. Então, já imaginou alguém, às vezes você perdeu o seu celular, você fica super preocupado porque alguém pode invadir ali as suas senhas, entrar nas suas contas. E aí, não, o banco já sabe que não é você, porque é, ele viu que, na verdade, é você é outro. Não, a Bárbara, normalmente, escreve o password rapidinho, deles estão lento, e ela com a canhota, destra, de cima, de baixo, é incrível. Exato, achei muito bacana. E os vários outros exemplos que ele trouxe aqui para a gente não, também. Não, é da, desse, desse tratamento de Parkinson, eu, como, como eu comentei com ele, eu vi... Mas, é, os testemunhos da, de dois ou três pacientes, nossa senhora, de, de morrer. Te viu como que eles se comportavam antes e depois, vendo só com essas, com essas ondas de ultrassom é, indo neles, foi realmente emocionante. Nossa, com certeza. E, e, e essa que é a parte interessante, né? Porque dois exemplos de dezenas, ou até mesmo de centenas de empresas. E, e você, como investidor nas Filipinas, no Brasil, no México, você, de fato, tem a possibilidade de investir nessas empresas que vão transformar o mundo. Quer dizer, então, você ter essa possibilidade é incrível. É incrível, incrível, incrível. Exato, com certeza. Então, assim, acho que foi isso mesmo. Acho que ele trouxe insights muito legais. O público vai precisar rever essa live aí para conseguir anotar todos esses... E para entender esse inglês do, desse sul-africano, né? Que não é fácil para ninguém. <risos> que maravilha. Obrigadíssimo, Bárbara. Obrigadíssimo vocês, nosso grande público. Eu gostaria, como sempre, de agradecer vocês por estarem aqui. E, pessoal, não perde. Semana que vem vamos ter mais um convidado de peso 
Não percam, estaremos aqui na mesma hora, quinta-feira, uma e meia. Abraço grande.